One of the coolest features out of Unreal 5.6 is the parametric wardrobe asset for MetaHuman. It's resizable clothing for any MetaHuman you create. But how do we make it? Is it easy to set up? And how efficient can we make this process? Well, follow me as I show you the fastest way to create reusable outfits for any MetaHuman. So before we get into Unreal Engine, we need to go to the Fab Marketplace. People over at Epic has created some assets that make it easier for us to actually create our reusable outfits. So I'm here on the home page of Fab and on the left and the channels, you can see MetaHuman. Now I'm gonna go up to Publishers and I'm just gonna search Epic. So Epic Games. This is gonna show me the assets that are only created by Epic Games themselves. And the ones we're focused on are these two. It's the MetaHuman Clothing Construction Presets. This is a set of two, and then this is a set of four. You can use either for this. For the set of four, you'll have to be doing it two more times, although you probably will get better results. But for this demo, I'm just gonna demonstrate with these set of two. So on the MetaHuman Clothing Construction Preset page, we are going to add it to our library. I already have it added. And we're gonna hit download. One thing to keep in in mind there is a note here we need to download the additional files if we download this it's only one body type that's just unfortunately a limit of fab right now but in the additional files that will be a zip file that has it all so we're just going to hit download so i just unzipped my zip file and this is what we have we have body shape a of two this is a mhpkg this is a metahuman package and then there are fbx's here the fbx's are what we can use in other programs to create our assets and the metahuman package is what we need to bring into unreal so let's get started with some setup first i'm going to close down fab and i have my project open here let's create a folder and i'm going to say mh wardrobe i'll say body types and I'm also gonna create a folder called body scale meshes. This is gonna come in handy later. So in, under body types, we are just gonna click and drag our MetaHuman packages. And you'll see here, after importing, we have two MetaHuman character assets. It's the body shape A of two and the body shape B of two. So let's open up body shape A of two. With this open, we see our MetaHuman that we are going to size our outfit to, at least one body type that we are. We need at least two for resizable to work. Now this is a very important step. Please don't overlook this step. If you go up to MetaHuman character, we are going to export the combined scale to mesh. And we're gonna put that into our body scale meshes. Now I'm just gonna call this body shape A of two, and we're gonna do the same for the body shape B of two. The reason that this is important, that is going to create a file for us, a skeletal mesh, for us to input later in our cloth asset. You need to have the correct skeletal mesh for this to work. When I was testing it out, I was actually using the FBXs in that zip file, and it was giving me lots of issues. And then I found that you can just export it from the MetaHuman character, and that is cleaner. Now, this next step might not be necessary. You might be able to use the FBXs that come in that zip file, but in my testing, I did it this way, so I'm just going to show you this way because I know it works. So if we go over to body scale meshes, we're going to click and drag these into our scene and we just want to put them at origin. What we want to do is select the first one and we're going to file export selected and I'm just going to export that into a folder I call MetaHuman Wardrobe. Let's also add, we'll say scale body scale meshes and I'm just going to call this SM body A of two. The FBX export options, we don't need level of detail and we don't want collision, uh, nor do we need morph targets, just vertex color, and that should be fine, FBX 2013. We're gonna do the same for body B of two. What we're doing in this step is we are exporting our skeletal meshes out of Unreal so we can load them into our next program to create our outfits pretty easily. So to create outfits, we can either bring it into say Maya or Blender and create one outfit around one character. And then we have to duplicate that and we have to push and pull vertices to fit our other body type. Because remember, we're essentially giving a calibration to Unreal Engine to say, this is how it looks on this body. This is how it looks on this body. Now in the in-betweens, use that information to fit whatever other body. And you could do it manually, but it's a little bit more painstaking. I prefer to use MetaTailor. For those who don't know what MetaTailor is, MetaTailor is a software that allows you to auto wrap clothing to a MetaHuman or any character that you bring in. I've demonstrated this before in other videos if you want to see a more in-depth tutorial. But what's pretty awesome is we can create what's called an assembly of an outfit and it's an easy just click and apply to any character that you want. Now, full transparency here, MetaTailor did give me free 
access to MetaTailor in exchange to create videos. Now, that being said, no money has exchanged hands. They are allowing me to say anything that I want about the software. And frankly, I wouldn't be showing off MetaTailor if I didn't really like it. So we're going to start a new project and let's call this body a of two. And there's an avatar here. We are going to import though. We want to bring in that skeletal mesh that we exported just before. And I'm going to go navigate and find my SM body A of two. We're just going to hit next step, next step. What's cool about MetaHumans is they do auto map. Now, sometimes you do have to adjust it slightly. What I found is that everything is pretty good except for the nose tip. So we'll just click and drag and then the nipples. So we'll just do that. But everything else seems to be uh, pretty spot on. And we'll just hit next step. And that is going to allow us to now fit clothing. There's a couple ways that we can create an outfit for a character. We can individually add items and then we can take those individual items and create what's called an assembly. So let's do this. This is an interesting kind of these shadow blade thing. So I'm going to put this boot on kind of like this jacket here need some pants so let's i think uh, cyberpunk tech pants that was a little better and we can rearrange we want to put the boot above and let's just adjust everything so the boot i just want to move it and rotate it we're just fixing the pose slightly and if we hit confirm it'll resize the pants, uh, they have a thing called shrink wrap. I want to make it a little bit tighter. The jacket's pretty good. Let's get a t-shirt underneath. Let's find something else. Shoulder back. And right now it's putting it over the jacket, but we can just click and drag, put it there. And we want it under the pants as well. There we go. So that's looking pretty cool. Um, we only have one boot on, but we can select and we can hit the mirror function. And now we have both. But what we want to do is there's a folder here and that is going to create a new assembly. So we can just say uh, shadow outfit. And now we can just go and we can click and drag our outfits in, our little assets in. Now we have what's called an assembly. But if I go to my assemblies, you'll see it's loading and it's not here. Well, we can go to these three little dots here and we can just hit save. Let's go to home. Let's go back. There we go. Just need a little restart. Here is our shadow outfit. And if you don't want to create your own assembly, you can go to the marketplace here, go to category, go to assembly. And there are a bunch of assemblies that are actually just ready to download. So you can download them, they'll be added to your library and you can apply them. So let's export our clothing for our body A of two. I'm gonna choose an export path and we're gonna name this shadow outfit A of two. Now when it comes to the export settings, there are a few settings to watch out for. You want it as an FBX, the textures you want PNG, scale up X100 on and scales one. We don't want to include the avatar. We just want the clothing. Now, skin weights you can have on. If you have this checked on, it will export a skeleton with the clothing. Now, unfortunately, one of the things with MetaTailor is that any clothing that you put in, whether it's custom clothing or this clothing here, when it exports, it triangulates it and it doesn't actually merge the vertices. So when you import it into Unreal, it actually gives you some hard edges. Now, I'm going to show you how to fix that. If that's not an issue for you, you can export it with skin weights. It's fine. I'm going to uncheck skin weights because we're going to bring this geometry into Maya quick merge the vertices, soften the edge and export it out again. And in our process in Unreal, we are going to be transferring the skin weights to create this wardrobe asset. So we don't necessarily need the skin weights. So let's export. Now we need to do it for our second body. So let's go to the home. We're going to create a new project. We're going to import our avatar. Go to next step, next step. Again, like I mentioned before, just need to fix the nose tip and the nipples. And now for our second body, What's really easy is we could go to content browser. It's already here, but if it doesn't show up on top, you can go to assemblies and group and just apply this shadow outfit. And that'll load all of the clothing, apply all the settings, and voila, we have our character. So let's hit save and we'll go to export. So shadow outfit B of two, 
can keep all the same settings and we will hit export. And that's pretty much it for MetaTailor. Now, one thing to keep in mind, we set up our body A of two and we set up our body B of two. Well, now if we go to home, these are assets that we will always have in here. So we could just go over to this project, apply new assembly and export it. So the setup is actually a one-time thing. So that's pretty awesome. So I open up Maya, I have my shadow outfit A of two. Let's click and drag this FBX in. And for some odd reason, even though we unclicked avatar, it's still bringing in the avatar. So let's just delete that. I'm just gonna go down the list here. We can isolate. I'm gonna select all the vertices. I'm gonna go to edit mesh and merge. And I'll open up the option box because I'm gonna be hitting this a couple times. And the other one that we want is mesh display. So with all the vertices selected, hit apply and we are going to soften edge and we can just do that for everything else and let's just rename them because it'll be a little bit cleaner we can just select those four export selection and we'll do an fbx export navigate to my folder with the outfit exports it's going to be the same name but i'm just going to say underscore merged now we can delete we can bring in our b of two and do the same process and now we can finally get back into Unreal Engine. So I'm going to create a folder. Let's keep this organized. We'll call it Outfits and let's call it Shadow Outfit. And what we're going to do is we are going to drag and drop our FBXs in. And I'm just going to hit import. And if we go to A of two, we are going to import the same. Some of the textures are a little messed up. So let's fix that. Okay, now that that's all set up, let's go into the cloth assets. So for this to work, you do need these plugins. MetaHuman, this is already needed for the MetaHuman creator. And cloth, if you go to chaos cloth, that's what you need. Uh, this should be default, but just in case it's not, that's what needs to be loaded. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a cloth asset. We're going to call the CA shadow A of two. And you see there's a data flow asset as well as the cloth asset. Let's open the cloth asset. And there's a lot here. We are actually going to delete all of this. And we're just left with a USD import, transform positions and a transfer skin weights. So we need to right click and do a cloth asset terminal. This is basically the end of that cloth asset. And what we need to do is we need to bring in a static mesh import as well as a merge cloth collections. So the static mesh import, we are going to need as many as our meshes are. So we have four. So let's just copy and paste. So here's our four static mesh imports. And what we're going to do is just go to each one and over on the right here, the static mesh, we are just going to click and drag. So this is A of two. So let's start with the boot, the jacket, the pants, and the shirt. And what we're going to do is click and drag these collections into here. If we run out, we can add a pin and add one more. And this collection is going to go into the transform positions and we can delete that USD import. Now, if we go to transfer skin weights, we need to give it a skeletal mesh to transfer to. Well, do you remember those skeletal meshes that we exported earlier in the under body scale meshes? Well, that's what we're gonna use. So click and drag that A of two and click drag it here. And now we are good on that asset. Let's create a new cloth asset for our CA shadow B of two. And we're gonna just go through the same steps. We're gonna delete all of this. Cloth asset terminal. Static mesh import, and you can use skeletal meshes. You don't need to use static mesh. If you go here, skeletal mesh import, or if you did have a USD, it all depends on the outfit type that you're bringing in. So that's all interchangeable. It just needs to go into the transform positions. And a merge cloth collections. And we are going to bring in the B of two. And put 
that into transform positions. Go to transfer skin weights. We're going to go back to that skeletal mesh and click and drag. So we have our two cloth assets. How do we get them together to work as a resizable outfit? Well, that is called an outfit asset. So we're going to click that and I'm going to call it OA shadow. And if I hit enter, it's going to say select a template. We can select no data flow, empty data flow, but then there's a simple outfit and there's resizable outfit. We're going to hit resizable and that's going to create our asset. So let's open it up. One thing, just so you know, before you do anything in the outfit asset, go up to these three dots here and hit manual graph evaluation. If you do automatic, every time you add a single thing, it's going to be thinking for a little bit. And it's not a super long process, but if it's doing it multiple times when you're just trying to add the assets, it's a pain. We're going to go under the data flow here, variable outputs. You see it's grayed out. We're just going to check it. And now we can add an array element. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding our cloth asset in the source asset. And then the source body part is our skeletal mesh from before. So A of two, let's click and drag. And I'm just going to size name. We're just going to name it A. And then body shape. A of two, the skeletal mesh is going to go under here. Now we need to do it one more time for our body B of two. There we go. So let's save and let's hit evaluate data flow graph. So I only added two array elements, one for the body A of two and one for the body B of two. If you were using the four pack that was on fab, you'd be adding four array elements. And what's pretty cool is that if you add an outfit to a body, but the skinning is still a little weird where it's poking out or you need to fix something. Well, you can export that combined skeletal mesh, go export it, do the same process and essentially just add another array element for a different body type. The more info that Unreal Engine has, the better for putting it onto any body type. So now that the evaluate data flow graph is done thinking, we're going to hit save. Now let's create a new folder. We're going to call this MetaHumans, and let's just create a new MetaHuman character. So I'll say test MetaHuman. So if we go to hair and clothing, you'll see hair grooms, eyebrows, eyelashes. This is all awesome. We're not going to get into that today. We're going to go down to outfit clothing. Now there's skeletal clothing. My assumption with skeletal clothing is that if it's just already skinned and you're not looking to add it to multiple bodies, you can drag and drop into here and then it would apply. I haven't really messed with it yet, but if this is outfit clothing for resizing, skeletal clothing would just be almost like our old way of doing it. So let's drag our OA shadow into outfit clothing. And you see it actually creates a new asset for us called a uh, MetaHuman wardrobe asset. It's WI. OA shadow and we're just gonna hit save and now if I double click WI OA shadow voila our character has our outfit now granted this is very shiny uh, the textures need a little bit of work but we have our asset and if we go over to body we can go over to model and if we adjust the body it'll fit the outfit and as you can see, it's moving now with our change. So this is such a game changer. This is so awesome, especially in your project. If you say have a bunch of soldiers or a bunch of zombies or something that are wearing the same thing, you don't want the same one person or the same three people. You want multiple different bodies. You want multiple different people to give it something that feels lived in. Well, this is a great way. It's a very easy setup that once you do, I mean, it's just so easy. And again, with Meta Tailor, now that the body A of two and body B of two is set up, you could just create outfits, import and do it. Honestly, that the hard part is done by that point. But let me know in the comments what you think. Are you going to be checking out Meta Tailor to use with the MetaHuman Creator in resizable outfits? Because I think it's kind of a no brainer in, in my eyes. If you're interested in learning more about animation, check out these videos here. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.